evening in South London. My name is Martin McPherson Bothell, and I'm the director of music at the church. And it's going to be my pleasure to give you a guided tour of the magnificent 1906 Harrison and Harrison that lives in the church. Do it joy. So here we are with the organ behind me. As you can see, it's uh, an imposing instrument. It's in a, a very large case. The pipes at the front are 16 feet in length and form part of the great and the pedal choruses. The instrument is magnificent and it's housed in an equally magnificent church. It's a bold, full-blooded instrument, but it's one very typical of its time. There are a few ranks that you just wouldn't find on modern instruments. And not everything is necessary to today's tastes. As one eminent writer of the organ said, today we would do differently, but we certainly couldn't do any better. So let's go explore. Let's go and see what this magnificent instrument behind me has to offer. And let's have some fun doing it. So here we are at the back of the choir organ. Let's take a look inside. Let's see what lives there. Come inside with me. As you can see, it's a tight fit in here. But there are quite a few ranks. There are nine ranks of pipes in here. Uh, and over the top, which I think we can just see below the choir shutters, are the pipes of the 16 foot stop. So, quite a lot in here. Up on the top, as you'll be able to just about see maybe, are the shutters. Those are currently open, as you can see, and they attenuate the sound, rather like in the swell box. But, uh, certainly, a few things living in here. Let's put them all back to bed. So where do all the various bits of this organ live? We've seen the main case and we have seen the ample choir case for quite a large division. Where is it played from? Well, it's played from the console which in all buildings that was nearly a cathedral, once in its history style, the console's at some distance to the main instrument, but it's not too far, and it's quite easy to play. There's not much of a lag in, in time. So as you can see, the main case to the console is, is a little way away. Let's take a journey up there, not tripping over the steps. And take a look at the console. So here is the console, as you can see behind me. It's immediately apparent that we have a rather special instrument here. The console itself is typical of Harrison and Harrison and is opulently built with the finest materials. It makes the instrument, which is quite a large instrument, very, very easy to play. It's very comfortable and everything's in the right place. As you can possibly see from your armchairs, there's a set of general pistons as well as the usual divisional pistons, which makes, this, makes playing this organ even easier. As I said, it's beautifully laid down and very, very comfortable. The only downside with this console is the fact that the swell pedal is attached to the front of the swell box by a set of few rods, which actually go through a few 45 and 90 degree curves. It's very heavy. In fact, it's probably the heaviest swell in London. But bracing yourself against these rather beautiful 13th century iron railings, 
the effect is magnificent when you do use the swell box because the swell box opens up to be even louder than that of the grate by virtue of the fact that the choruses are on the same wind. Let's take a closer look and just see how this instrument sounds. Welcome to the office and what a sumptuously appointed one it is too. This is the console of the 1906 Harrison in All Saints Tooting and we're here to explore the various sounds that this instrument has to offer. As you can see it is quite a large instrument for a parish church. There are 12 stops on the grate, 12 stops on the swell, 9 stops on the enclosed and very orchestral choir and 8 stops on the pedal. The lack of pedal upper work is fairly typical of the time and doesn't really present us with, with any problems, provided you play the instrument as it was intended to be played, as it was built. So let's take a look at what makes this instrument what it is. Let's take the large open diapason of the principal chorus. As you can hear, it's quite a full, full-blooded stop. At the moment I'm working around the fact that we don't have an F-sharp that's suddenly shown up. Oh well, never mind. But the large open doesn't have any of that big, large, leather-lipped quality that you may find on, on a hill of the same period. So it is still very clear. <laughs> swim in the church is rather beautiful acoustic. Here is the small open diapason. And as you can hear with that, that's still quite harmonically developed. It's a little bit stringier than the larger of the two diapasons, but it's very musical. Just notice we've got our, we nearly had our F sharp. Oh well, please give generously to the organ fund. The principal. I'm playing down an octave so you can hear how it compares with the other two diapasons. So there's, there's the principal, there's the small, and the large. It's fairly similar in scale to the small, probably slightly larger. And here it sits on top. And on the large. Let's have a listen to the Fifteenth. The fifteenth on its own. It's quite bright, but without being overly scaled. It's a few pipes under the principal. Let's hear what it sounds like on the small diaphasing chorus. Very, very bright, but not dominant. Here it is on top of the large chorus. And with the twelve. as we must, to the mixture. It's an unashamedly Harrison harmonics complete with the flattened 21st. But before you turn off and go and tune into In the Night Garden or Teletubbies or something far more friendly, have a listen to it.
And for those of you who are interested, as many of you are, as to where a harmonics, uh, Harrison harmonics breaks back, you just heard it. Let's listen to the chorus without it. to always have this particular mixture sound. You can couple the swell, and I'm just going to couple the mixture and the swell on its own. And just brighten it up with a super optic coupler. The mixture itself on the right really does add something quite interesting. Let's have a listen. And with the large open diapason. It's very, very friendly. Let's take a look at the two flutes. There is a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous hall flute. Let's listen to what that sounds like. Flute again is rather lovely. Perfectly beautiful. There is a harmonic flute at the four foot. Let's, for comparison's sake, play it down an octave. It's beautifully breathy, isn't it? Let's try it on top of the raw flute, the small of the two flutes. It changes its character slightly. There is one other thing on here which is rather lovely, and that's the Gross Geigen. It's 16 foot principal but it's beautifully scaled. You can play it right down to the bottom note. To compare it with
with the main principal chorus, and it's played up an octave. It's fun time. The reeds. There are two, and they're independent. Here's the eight-foot trumba, and it's absolutely gorgeous. That really fires around the building in the most most militaristic fashion. The octave tromba is an independent rank. Let's play it an octave lower to prove it. Let's have both of them, and maybe a little bit of help from the pedal. together with the principal chorus, the gross geigen and both reeds, is a glory to behold. Here we go. The swell division, or the caged rage, as Carlo Curley would call it, is a very, very large and very powerful division. It's voiced on the same wind pressure as the grate, so care must be taken not to let it drown the grate. The open diapason sounds like this, and I'll play it with the box open. With the principal. Tina, two foot, but if we listen to it. It's not a flute, it is definitely a 15th type principle. Come to the mixture. The mixture on the swell is slightly odd in so much as there are two quints, that's non unison ranks, and one unison. But it sounds like this. On its own, it sounds slightly odd. But with the rest of the chorus, it's, it's lovely. with the super octave coupler. We have one, so why not use it? Very bright indeed. There is a Lipnick Borden at 16 feet. For comparison purposes, I'll play it up an octave. And where it lives. Notice though, it's very clear. And with the principal chorus, the warden sounds like this. So it does thicken things up nicely. 
There are a family of four reeds on this instrument, which we shall come to in a minute. First of all, let's listen to the quiet stops. There's a beautiful Lieblichgedacht. beautiful echo gamba. Which teams up with the most heavenly celeste, I think, on the planet. Have a listen to this beauty. closed. We get some beautiful effects with the octave and sub octave couplers. I'm sure there is an angel somewhere in that swell box. On to the reeds. The horn, with the box back open again, sounds like this. This is the eight foot horn, the main chorus reed of the swell. <laughs> Clarion is actually slightly brighter than the eight foot horn, so I'll play it down an octave for comparison. And with the horn. The 16-foot reed, the double trumpet, is about as far away from a Willis Contrafagotto that you could possibly get. It's everything the large trumpet. So let's remind ourselves of the 8-foot horn. And here is the double trumpet up an octave for comparison. Here's the lead chorus. You mustn't forget the little oboe, which does make a rather lovely solo stop. There's a nice chorus read. If I have to take the eight and four principles.
very, very useful thing indeed. Let's hear full swell. That's what you pay your money for. And for the brave, adding a super octave. sub-octave coupler to that uh, great rage, it counts as uh, musical or, or, or stupidness, to be honest. I'm going to plump the latter and be utterly stupid and see what it sounds like. Sometimes it's just fun being silly. The choir division is almost an enclosed orchestral division. It's very, very romantic, very orchestral. Let's take a look at, or a listen rather, to what there is available. Here is the eight-foot Geigen. It's a real Geigen. It's not just a strange scaled, uh, strangely scaled. I'm going to start that again. Let's. We come now to the choir division, which you could almost call an orchestral, uh, such as its voicing and the family of stops that live there. Let's start with the Geigen. It, the Geigen isn't actually just a, an oddly stringy diapason, it really is a Geigen. It's principal. There's a lovely parabell flute. Sound of flute. And a harmonic piccolo. Save the viola de gamba till last because when you do want to put that one away, it doesn't always want to go. It wants to stay and play with the rest of the stops, and it means either going up inside the case and hitting something 
or turning the instrument completely off, waiting for five minutes and turning it back on again, which you can't really do when you're turning a page. So, there is a contradulciana, which is lovely. <laughs> right the way down to the bottom. We come, as we must, as I always say, to the reeds. And the reeds here are absolutely gorgeous. There is a beautiful clarinet. At all, there is an absolutely wonderful orchestral oboe. is under expression. Let's try the Viola de Gamba and hope it plays. That isn't a sound you hear on many organs. So we have part solo, part choir, part orchestral. There is a transfer from the reeds on the grate to the, just put them on the choir, which pretty much finishes it off as being a solo. We can move them down here. pedal division of this organ is typical of a turn-of-the-century romantic instrument. There's nothing above eight foot, and for the romantic repertoire there was really nothing above eight foot needed. We weren't playing as much classical music as we do now. But what there is, is of absolutely top quality. There is a small 16-foot sub-bass. Which you almost can't hear at the console. But in the church, it does add a nice, firm, but quiet space to the rest of the organ. Here it is with its eight-foot counterpart. The real foundation of this organ's pedal division is the 16-foot great bass. The great bass is a large, scaled, but very cleverly voiced open wood. Have a listen. is very, very bassy, but it's very clear and it doesn't boom. There is also the 
16 foot violon, which comes from the Gross Geigen of the Great Organ. And the octave, which is an octave to the great bass. So all together, we get this. which is quinted below middle C, and at the console it sounds terrible, but once you're out in the body of the church, it really does add a profound depth to the organ here. In fact, it's difficult to tell if you're listening to a, a small half-length 32-foot reed or a real double open wood in full organ. It, it works beautifully well. So here it is. Very useful indeed. We come, as we must, to the reeds. I don't know one organist on this planet of ours who wouldn't love to wake up with that on Christmas morning, filling his Christmas stocking. There's an eight foot extension. And together they make this lovely sound. Pedal division, full, you get this. Yeah. 